Hey guys, how are you? Welcome back to my winter garden. It is a typical winter day today. It is like cold and frosty and I can even see my own breath standing here talking to you. But there is no wind, there is no rain, there is no snow, there is no hail, there is no nothing. So actually it makes it the perfect day to go out here. You can tell Alfie's happy as well. She's kind of like running around. She can't wait to go out. Even though a second ago, both of us, we still sat inside on the nice warm couch in front of a fireplace. I had a hot coffee. Coffee. and I was really second guessing am I getting out here but yes I'm happy I did and today's video I'm going to be like your talking walking onion I didn't gain a lot of weight I'm just like wearing layers and layers and layers of clothing so I still feel nice and toasty and even though I'm your walking talking onion I think my breath is fresher and better to be honest but what I want to do in today's video is something that is actually perfect around this time of the year because I want to get in the front garden and start with my pruning. So I want to prune two shrubs. The first one, well, it's kind of a big shrub. It's kind of like a small tree or a big shrub. I can never decide. Is the willow that is in the front garden. And the second one is a robinia. So those are the two things that I want to tackle in today's video. To be fair, um, I don't think the video will be very long because it's going to take me the entire day to do it and stand on the ladder and just really cut back as much as I can. But I can't really talk too much about it. And visually, it's also not that interesting maybe what I can show you but still it is very vital I'm just going to talk you through now why I'm doing it now this time of the year and if you're pruning anything maybe that you should also consider doing it now this time of the year as well so still hope that you're excited to spend the day with me in the garden for those of you who follow me already for quite a while, you know I'm standing in the front garden and just behind the hatch there is a road which means that unfortunately there will be the sound of cars every now and then, but I still want to talk you through a little bit this area. So you can tell that the willow is kind of like a centerpiece in this entire border planting. And to be fair, when I arrived here, the only thing that was in the front garden were the hatches and the willow and there we sit. So we kind of built the entire swoop off this border just around the willow and frame it and I think it works really well because the willow as you can tell is not a classic typical tree shape it doesn't have a big trunk and a canopy on top of it it is a multi trunk and I feel that is really exciting and also gives a very whimsical feel to the entire uh, shrub basically because it has a very beautiful bark and all the new growth has like these twisted branches with like elongated leaves very beautiful there's really this like fairy-esque quality to it and especially in springtime when the iris are in flower and the tulips are out and the nepeta starts flowering it really feels quite magical and here also with a swing bench that is just on my left I really love this part of the garden at that time of the year um, there are two reasons on why I always cut back the willow harsh. Reason number one is this is east facing and the house is there and the living room is also on this side of the house. So when the willow grows too big, we take a lot of light away and we really want to make sure that the house is always filled with a lot of light and sun to make it like warm and bright and everything. So this is reason number one. And the second reason is also I don't want it to be too overpowering basically, just in proportion because the border planting here, yes, there are some some Ptolemy's canthus grasses in there but still I want to make sure that in dimension and proportion everything is still working well and since there is a heavy underplanting here willows take a lot of water and they require a lot of water and the bigger the willow and the tree is the more water it requires so by cutting it back and just restraining it um, it requires less water. You will see that I will get in here really, really harsh in a moment because that willow grows about two meters every single year, which is a lot. And that also shows you how much water it needs because growing two meters, I mean, it needs a lot of energy and it takes the energy out of the soil. It requires the water. And this is also where I can tell, do I need to water this area, yes or no? Because as you know, I don't have anything on irrigation. And when it comes to watering, I really do it just like um, those areas where I see it is needed. There's also a reason why I chose underplanting the way I did. There's sedum in here, there is aster astrum, there is a variety of medium that I was showing in one of my previous videos already. Um, those three are very drought tolerant. They don't really require a lot of 
of water but there is one plant in here which is a good indicator always for me and that is a phlox i grow the variety called david in here beautiful white elegant simple really tall for a phlox absolutely love her but that always shows me yes i need water because when the willow takes too much water out of the area the phlox start to have like sad hanging leaves and the flower heads are also kind of just like flopping over a little bit so then i always now need to come in here with my water house and tackle the area you might wonder why do I cut back at this time of the year in the middle of winter and the easiest answer is because a textbook tells me so but it's also because now I get to see actually what I'm doing because when the entire tree here is full of full of leaves I don't see a thing really it's really difficult to figure and now at least I know where I can cut and um, where it makes sense and I get to see the shape in everything quite well and the second reason is that during the summer month you absolutely should not prune because of nesting birds I've to be fair I've never seen a bird nesting in the willow here but you never know you want to make sure that you do not disturb the wildlife in your garden so when it comes to pruning willows or in general when it comes to like fruit tree or like shrub um, pruning best time of the year to do it is in between November and March most of the fruiting trees I would probably prune really like in late February March time I think around that time of the year um, a willow is kind of indestructible. It's one of those trees uh, or shrubs that you can hardly kill, literally. So even cutting it back hard, I think I could honestly just come in with my chainsaw and just strip it back all the way to the ground and it is going to bounce back, which I'm not going to, obviously. But just to say, I know that a willow is almost indestructible. So what I'm going to show you now is like flip the phone um, and just walk over there because in front of the house there is a rubinia and this is the other ornamental tree that I want to prune. This border is fully south-facing, which means it's basking in the sun for a big time of the day and then with a house at the back reflecting the heat, I really need to think about what kind of plants I could put here. But actually it's really nice because I could put all of those sun lovers and even some of the tender plants in here. So I've got my sedum in here, which is thriving extremely well in this area, obviously. And then I grow euphorbia here. And this is a variety, I think that comes from the Mediterranean, if I'm not wrong. Really love this one because it has this absolute beautiful blue foliage. It's evergreen. It always stays like that, which is a lovely winter structure. And it can be a little bit on the tender side here, but since this is south facing and it's so close to the house, it's always happy, never lost a single plant. And I think next year I might try to propagate from some cuttings. And since I'm growing quite some different varieties of euphorbia here in the front garden, I feel next spring to come, I will give you a little tour and make a separate video just about euphorbias because there are quite some interesting, really beautiful varieties growing in here. But today's video is not about euphorbias or about the plants that I'm growing in here. It's about prunings and you can tell this is a robinia. And this was one of the first things that we planted in this area when we developed this uh, side of the garden. Wanted to have like one ornamental tree pretty much symmetrical uh, in between the two windows. And something that you can always prune and cut back hard because again it's south facing so we do not want to take too much sun away. And Rubinias are very, very tolerant when it comes to cutting them. You can always prune them back hard. They grow about like 80 centimeters to one meter each and every single year, which is also a lot. So they really respond well to any kind of pruning. And you will tell by the end of the video, it might be the prettier side, but it's vital for it. And it is a good thing to restrain it actually, because it always bounces back very happily. Pretty much the same as a willow. It's indestructible you can't really do a lot wrong there so this is why I think like if you think about adding a ornamental tree to your garden a rubinia might be an interesting choice because number one is it is kind of easy you can't really ruin a lot there when you prune too much most of the time it's always going to bounce back quite happily so it's not one of those trees that puts a lot of trash uh, pressure on you and also if you have like just a limited amount of space in your garden you don't want to plant something that is so overpowering and big a rubinia might also be a good idea because you cut it back harsh every single year because then the next year it's going to come back and you always have this nice kind of like sphere round shaped canopy which is really beautiful. Um, the leaves are very pretty on this one, kind of small. They um 
change color in autumn to a beautiful yellow golden tone. It doesn't keep the leaves too long though. This is one of the sad things about it. Once the leaves start coloring up, it's gonna stay there maybe for a week or two and then that was it for the autumn display, but still very beautiful. Rubinias can flower. There are some varieties that really have beautiful flowers that kind of remind me a little bit of wisteria. This one doesn't though. This is just one that is green and nice and beautiful, but no flowers. But since there is a lot of underplanting here and a lot of the things will come to flower in this area, I feel it's nice to have like just a tree that does not produce any flowers maybe. Some Rubinias are bound to have like runners, this one doesn't, so this is something that you might want to consider as well. Um, but this is very a fairly easy tree. Two things that it requires are full sun, Rubinias love to sit in full sun, uh, partly shade can work quite well okay. I have one sitting more in a partly shaded area, but full sun is better. And the second um, good information might be the soil condition. So it requires anything. Rubinias thrive everywhere. So this is also like one of the positive things I really feel. This side of the garden, I really don't understand sometimes the soil condition of our garden. To be honest, here it's almost sand. It's just sand. I don't really know how this dike works. Here we only have sand and three meters on that side we have like really nice and rich soil. So I don't really know what happened here. But for that moment, momentum, I was like, I can't change the entire soil here. I can try to enrich it, make it better, but I cannot just dig out an entire trench of sand and just like put fresh soil in here. So that was also why I was choosing the plants that I was choosing. And a Rubinia thrives extremely well in this sandy soil. So again, absolutely beautiful and makes it so easy and lovely. But what I'm going to do now is get my ladder and really start tackling the willow first.
It's a new day, so yesterday what happened, as usual, I kind of ran out of daylight at one point, but I still managed to tackle the entire willow, so you can see in my back how it looks now. And if you think that this is kind of like looking a little dead and barren, honestly, this is exactly how it should look like. This is the best side possible, and this is why it really took me a while yesterday, because I really got in there and did a thorough job, really trying to make sure that I just snip out all of these like tiny spindly branches that are in there as well. Well, some of which were already dead anyways but even if you see like these small spindly branches still looking green and nice and flexible I can tell you just from experience with growing a willow like this is that those branches will die off during winter anyway so it's always good to just come in there with your secateurs and really clean it up and what you really want to have is that you're left with a nice structure like this so you always have these like really nice bigger branches and from there it can just shoot out again. Always make sure that branches are not like rubbing on each other because we always have wind here so whenever they're like rubbing what can happen is that um, the bark comes off an infection, fungus, something can just come into the shrub basically. And yesterday I wanted to show you still how I was cleaning up everything because it was a huge, huge pile that I've taken out but the phone died so I didn't have battery or anything but I was like okay I just want to finish at least the cleaning. I do not want to leave everything as it is. So this is what I did yesterday. I'm going to show you in a second though where I put everything. So for those of you who watch my videos frequently you kind of have an idea I guess where I put all of those like cuttings. So yeah down by the slope where the dad hatches this is where I put everything but some of the branches are looking really nice. I have a plan and idea what I might want to do with them. So by the end of the video I'm going to show you how everything is looking but what I'm going to do now first is I'm just going to go to the other side here so basically here and start tackling the rubinia. This is going to be a lot faster though because I mean you can tell it's a lot smaller obviously and I could just snip things off fa yeah, fairly fast. So this is going to take me probably an hour uh, compared to the willow that really took a uh, pretty much five hours out of me yesterday in total with cleaning and everything. That was quite a long job, but I'm happy that I've made it. I'm happy with the way it's looking and everything. Alfie's happy because the car is coming, so she's barking. But yeah, let's continue and let's focus on the Rubinia now. So this is how everything is looking. I'm really happy with that. I just want to give you a quick closer look at everything again. And to be fair, the Rubinia, you can cut it back even harder if you wanted to. Like I still keep kind of a good size canopy up here, but it really is going to bounce back. So if you wanted to and want to have it even smaller in growth, you can really go all the way back to here basically and just trim it back here. It is going to bounce back. And you can tell that I really stripped back all of the stringy little branches and like leaf axis and everything that was left in there. So really make sure that you have a nice good looking canopy, kind of lofty. Nothing is really like crossing too much, nothing is rubbing. Uh, all the uh, branches are cut on a good angle so that water does not sit on them. That is always important. And the reason why I'm not trimming it back that hard is because I just want to make sure that the Rubinia has the opportunity to reach a certain height. Because if I just go with back with you, you get to see there is a lot of house and a lot of wall here. And at one point I think it's just nice to have a little bit of like greenery and structure there. Because even the Miscanthus, tall as it is, I mean, oh look, I think a bird just flew in. Oh, it's so nice. Like at this time of the year, you can really get to enjoy a lot of blue tits and uh, gray tits are here. And there was another bird a second ago, because when I was cutting back everything, 
I just took the little bird feeder and put it down on the ground. And at one point, there was a big, white, fluffy bird called Alfie munging on the bird food. Believe it or not, she looked very happy, though. But I was like, oh, you already had breakfast. So I'm not sure if, like, a snack full of nuts is the thing that you really need right now. But all right. Not sure how much she ate. So let me just show you the willow. I'm so happy with this. Look, and I really love the branches, like, when they're exposed like that, because a lot of them are still... Just try and show you a good example. You can just tell like they still have this like curved whining growing habit, kind of like a fantasy fairy tale Disney movie something like where Maleficent would be living, I think. I just really love this shrub so much. So yeah, I decided that this is a tall shrub basically. The willow is a tall shrub while the rubinia is an ornamental tree. And just to walk back a little bit, you can see it just how it like the growing habit is it frames everything really beautifully and now thinking moving forward if i put a rose a climbing rose or something onto the trellis next to the swing bench i think that'd be so beautiful and then with all the fresh new leaves coming from the willow and the beautiful green branches that appear next spring oh, i'm so happy so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to walk you down to the slope and show you quickly what i did with all of the cuttings that i have from the pruning and what i intend on doing with those just on the way down to the slope, I just want to show you one thing. Yes, it looks pretty with the snow, but there is something that is not looking so pretty. Look at that. Mole piles everywhere. Literally everywhere. <laughs> Overnight it happened. Eight of them, I think. Seven or eight. I can't believe it. All in this one area. Why? I think the mole invited all of his friends over to throw a party in my garden, like a winter party, but... Well, it is what it is. I mean, at least the soil isn't frozen, so I can just come in with my shovel in a moment and just shovel it all off and just get rid of it so it doesn't do any more harm to the lawn that's buried under it. But let's just go down to the slope now. I'm down by the slope with you, and this is where I have my dead hatch. And on top of it, I put all of the fresh cuttings now. And if you can tell, it is quite a lot, actually, all the way down. And at the far end, so really, like, I come with my finger, there is where all the rubinia went. And also, those branches really nice. You can just tell this like where the slope is, all the planting and everything. But what I want to show you is that a lot of the branches from the willow, surprisingly, look really, really good. It's almost straight. I mean, obviously beautiful color. They always have this like really lovely green tone, like a moss green tone. But since they're so flexible, I mean, what willow normally is, and they're not so twisted, and I got so many of them, I thought, oh, I know what I'm going to do with them. I anyways wanted to prepare this bottom area here, just get in here with my garden fork in one of my future videos, and really start preparing the soil and everything, get the uh, perennial weeds out, and then I thought about maybe building a little fence here out of all the cuttings, basically. So really using all of the willow cuttings, and I just show you the rubinia as well. The rubinia is a lot um, skinnier branches, obviously, but also really nice, flexible. They grew really straight. So this is how the rubinia is looking. And you can tell they are also the perfect candidate to make them into a little like basket weave project. So yeah, I smell a basket weave project is on its way. What do you say? Do you smell it as well? Yeah? You smell it as well? Ooh, you smell it as well? Yes? Yeah? <gasps> Happy Alfie? Happy <laughs> Alfie? <laughs> you guys, that is it for today's project. I'm happy that I managed it. I mean, yesterday was a really long day and today was just like a casual hour, basically. So the Rubinia went really fast. And I think this is like maybe another interesting fact. If you want to grow an ornamental tree in your garden, that is carefree. Rubinia definitely is one of them. You might see my back. The snow kind of morphed into hail and Alfie is having a blast right now. I think I just... <laughs> excited her a little too much a second ago but what i'm going to do now is play a little bit with alfie and then we both go inside and call it a garden day because i just checked the uh, weather radar um there's even more snow to come so i think that was it for today but still i had great fun with you in the garden i'm happy that i finished off the project and as usual i would really love to welcome you in my garden very soon again up until then have a wonderful day guys bye mm -hmm.